Hello and welcome to Jimmy's World. My name is Jimmy. Today, we're gonna be looking at 10 of the fastest planes you can build in your shed. As the kids would say today, that's lit. I, I don't actually know what that means, but it sounds really cool. Let's get into it. If you wanna fly a plane, what kind of plane do you wanna fly? A jet fighter! Let's just get this game started right out of the gate with all the feels. Go to sonicsaircraft.com and they have it listed. Build and fly for 115,352 bills. This is what experimental is supposed to be. It can carry your entire family if you're single with no children. It is a single seat subsonics jet. I don't know how else to describe it. I mean, it is what it is. Look at it. It makes jet noises. It does jet things. It's a itsy bitsy teeny weeny little yellow fighter jetty thingy. Has a cruise. And this is why it's the first one on the list because ironically, a jet is the slowest airplane on this fastest list at 230 to 240 miles an hour or right at 200 knots. Weighs in at a mountainous 900 pounds. This is proof that everyone has a little bit of redneck in them. They basically started out with a glider and he just strapped a jet engine on it. Yeah, that is my kind of guy right there. How much would you love to be flying that thing right now? Man, that's awesome. And this is not the only jet powered experimental we have on this list. We have another one and that's further down the list and it is way crazier than this thing. We are all fighter jet pilots at heart. Even if we only ever fly a Cessna 150, we're still in our minds a fighter jet pilot. This is weird and awesome all at the same time. The Burkut my apologies, it's pronounced Bear Coot. Not to be confused with the Su 47 Bear Coot. 360 debuted in 1989. It came from the Rutan Long Easy, and the biggest differences between them was this one had a retractable landing gear and dual canopies, not just one big one. It is also powered by that same Lycoming 360, 180, 200 horse versions. Now this one will scoot you along a little bit faster at 215 knots and go all the way up to 29,000 feet. You're gonna have enough room for you and your friend in the back. Holding 55 gallons, you can go all the way to your favorite hamburger place. It'll climb out at 2,000 feet a minute. That's pretty good. This thing is awesome, but weird. They put the engine on the wrong side. It's, it's in the back, not in the front where they're supposed to go. And you got a little shorter wing up front and there's no rudder pedals. Now here's a fun fact. The wings and canard, which is a small wing up front, in the early ones were all made out of styrofoam. I mean, that, that, that's a little bit sketchy, not gonna lie. Also very similar to the Velocity line. Unfortunately, they are no longer available as kit form. However, you can still find them. We have one here on Barnstormers, $125,000, 2006. It looks like a flippin' spaceship. The Subsonics could only seat one, the Burkut, only two, the Lancer, the 4P, four place, pressurized, comes in at number three, and we did do a full review on this in my other video. You can check it out here. This one is Lindsay, as you'll recall. In my opinion, the sexiest airplane I have ever seen. It is just a beautiful, beautiful work of art. Here's the quick and dirty on it. It's got a Continental TSIO 550 putting out 350 horses, 253 miles an hour or 220 knots. Has a rate of climb of over 1,500 feet a minute with a gross weight of 3,500 pounds and you can go all the way up to 24,000 feet. This is easily my favorite 
four-seater of all time. To me, this is the perfect personal airplane. It's fast. It's a four-seater, so you can take more than just yourself. A little further down on this list is a hopped up version, the remodeled version of this with a turboprop. So stay tuned for that. That one is super exciting and it goes well over 300 knots. Ninjaga. What if you love the looks of this Lance Air 4, but you don't need those back seats? You just want the sports car version of your hot rod sedan. Well, that's this next airplane. This is the Legacy RG550. It's a two-person airplane, comes in at a 2,200 pound gross weight, and it will cruise, now this is a cruise speed of 276 miles an hour, or 240 knots. Yeah, God, that's hauling. The Legacy started out from Lance Air's original 235, and then they moved into the 320 series and the 360 series, which the 360 was so beautiful that it hung on display in New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art. And then when you, you know, hot rod it out, you put on a, a 350-horse six-cylinder, twin turbocharged, twin intercooled, you'll go way faster. This literally is the definition of an engine with wings. Don't let that small size fool you though, because where they took out the back seats, they still left room for a uh, golf bag and some fishing rods. They did have a fixed gear version of this, but it only cruises at 215 miles an hour or 187 knots. That little speck that just disappeared over our left, that, that was a Mooney that we passed like it was sitting still. A bye bye and if you really want to blow your mind, Patey built one of these and put a turboprop in it. And he says from his very own mouth, I can always do 372, 373 knots, worst case scenario. Light fuel, nice cool air, smooth air, 382, 383 knots. So it's about a 10. What would happen if you took the infamous Piper Malibu and you just took the nose section off of that and the tail section and shoved them together and put two little seats in there. The creators of this thing, Jim and Ed, were part of the Malibu design team in the 80s. And that kind of sort of is what happened. They just took the engine and prop and the tail, shoved them together from the Malibu and you get this thing. This little Quest Air Venture is quite the pocket rocket. Also powered by that same Continental 550. This one produces 280 horse. Comes in at 2,000 pounds. Push you along at that 240 knots at 12,000 feet. Burning a whopping 13 gallons an hour. This thing is full of weird dimensions. The cockpit is 46 inches wide, which is just as wide as my Cherokee 6. It is shorter than my Honda Odyssey minivan. It's only 16.3 feet long, 27.5 feet wingspan, and just under 8 feet tall. That's tiny. On a sad news, these are no longer being made. There is a new company that is trying to get them back up and going with a quick build kit, but these original ones took a lifetime to build. Estimates in the four thousand hour range which is i can't even imagine that that's crazy you figure the normal person works a full-time job for about two thousand hours a year so if you worked on this airplane full time it would still take you two years to build that is crazy this thing looks like a shark it's the swear engine sx 300. Ed Swearingen, or Swearingen, is the original airplane hot rodder. You want to know why those Comanches fly so fast? 
you can thank this guy. He was known for making some uh, hopped up modifications for those to get them moving along. He also came out with the Merlin turboprop aircraft and it was based off of a beach model 50 the twin bonanza a little further on in life the sino or sino swearing gin sj30-2 executive jet yes this is the guy that you want to design and help you with your kit model airplane unfortunately because he was an engineer he made things pretty stinking complicated and with this swear engine SX300, it came out, but it had to be pulled because it was just too darn complicated for us normal people. You know, there's still a few of them flying around. You can find one. On one trip, they recorded a cruising of 242 knots with 16.4 gallons an hour, which will give you right at 15 nautical miles per gallon, which is crazy. That is better than my car gets, and it does it a slightly faster. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely the way to go right here. This is the fastest piston-powered kit ever built. It is the Thunder Mustang. And just like the name suggests, and the looks of it, North American P51D Mustang. This one is a three-quarter scale P51 Mustang, but it will go the same speed. It's powered also by a V12. This one is 640 horsepower as compared to the original Rolls-Royce Merlin at 1,500 horsepower. Man. That is a gigantic engine, 27 liter on that original Merlin engine. And this one is only 10 liters. A four blade prop, just like the original one. A rate of climb at 5,500 feet a minute. And that same under the fuselage air intake that is iconic. The cruise speed on this thing, 300 knots. 345 miles an hour. Now the cruise speed on the original Mustang P51D was only 250 knots. However, the top speed was the same at 375 miles an hour or 326 knots. Wow, this is interesting. It says here the best glide speed on this is 153 knots. <laughs> which, which if you don't know, uh, the glide spe speed is when if your engine goes out, you got to maintain that to get the most distance for the amount of altitude you lose. It's not a glider, that's for sure. It probably glides as well as a brick. But man, is he cool. You can buy the kit brand new for $297,000. There's also a few of these used on the market, and you can find them every once in a while. Uh, that have all the different engines in them from the, the V8 automotive engines to this uh, specialty V12 here. This right here is why I absolutely love the experimental world because you can take a normal airplane but uh, let's just say you got a Corvette sitting in the garage that you're like, boy, I haven't driven that for a while, but it's got a really sweet supercharged LSGM engine that puts out 556 horsepower. Let's just yank it out and throw it in the airplane and see what it does. Or if you have a Dodge Viper with a big turbo on it that puts out 700 horsepower, you can do the same thing. And yes, those are the two starting engine options they offer with this thing, but... If 700 horsepower is still not near enough, you can do what others have done and just go full turbine engine that's pumping out over a thousand horsepower. That is all the BTUs right there. This Garrett version does 370 knots. To put that in perspective, that's going from New York to Miami in three and a half hours in a little two-seater airplane that you built in your garage. That's just ludicrous. It's plaid speed. I don't even want to call this experimental. This is where aviation should be. 
This is the fastest thing with a propeller. It is the Lance Air Evolution provided through Evolution Aircraft now. Now it did come from the other airplane that we had mentioned on this list, the Lance Air 4, and this one is the new revised slipperier version of that one with twice as much power. Yeah! You can buy yourself the 850 kit, which is that uh, PT6 cranked up to 867 shaft horsepower. That is putting out all kinds of crazy BTUs. It'll get you a cruise, listen to this, 330 knot cruise. That's not a max speed, that's a cruise. That is blistering fast, just crazy. And it'll have a 900 nautical mile range. And in case things don't go as well as you'd hope, don't worry, this one has a similar parachute, just like all the Cirruses that everybody loves. They call it the Evolution Emergency Airframe Parachute System, or EAP. It provides peace of mind to pilots and their passengers. Even has a thermal wing de-icing system. Here is a stat everybody loves. You have a four-seater airplane, and the biggest complaint is you can't actually get four people in with fuel fuel. Well, guess what? With this one, you can. It's got a max useful load of 2,000 pounds. 168 gallon tank that means you can put four full-size adults in there and fill up the tanks and still have some extra for some bags that is perfect I mean it'll set you back about a million and a half bucks but still love it want to get me one this evolution truly is where we could be and in fact where we are in the aviation world I love it Thank you, Lance Air. Thank you for everything you've done. Oh, man! Looks like a miniature F-15. You can just hear Danger Zone playing in the background. Right into the teeny tiny Danger Zone. He took the J-85 General Electric, the one they used in the T-38 Talon, the F-5 Freedom Fighter, and the Lear Jets, and basically just bolted some wings and threw a steering wheel on the front of it and that's how you came with the BD-10. That's my kind of guy. Some did say it was slightly overpowered for its size because it came in at 1600 pounds which is the same as a Cessna 172 except it had slightly more power. 3,000 pounds of thrust or as we say here in Jimmy's world, that's 3,000 BTUs out the back end. There were five that were built, three of them crashed, and two of them are used as display. But could you imagine flying and breaking the sound barrier in something that you built in your garage? Mama mia, that would be fantastic. A big stinking engine on this thing. It would max out at 1.4 Mach number. It would cruise when you pull that power way back at 593 miles an hour fighter jet level of rate of climb of 30,000 feet per minute. All right, so those are the show numbers. However, when it finally went into, well, no, I was not going to say production, but we'll say prototyping and flight testing. You know, it, it, it was a little tougher to get to those numbers than uh, Mr. Jim first anticipated. The first thing is the top speed. It never actually broke the speed of sound. I know, I'm really sad about that. You know, it only went Mach 0.83. Oops. I mean, that's basically my Cessna 150 can do that. I mean, really, you know? Uh, and the, uh, you know, the 30,000 foot per minute climb rate well, it was, it was still really impressive, but it was closer to about 10,000 feet per minute. He was just a little hyped up here. He must have been on some of that Mountain Dew. The idea is there. We need somebody to go out and make this happen. I mean, this was 30 years ago. We've got carbon fiber. We have some other things. And just looking at some of these other airplanes on this list, I don't think it would be too far out of the realm of possibilities to be able to build a supersonic home-built aircraft. 
Thank you so much for watching. My name is Jimmy. This is Jimmy's World. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button and let's continue this adventure in aviation together. See you next time. Bye-bye.